Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the anatomy of the parasympathetic nervous system. So the parasympathetic nervous system has cranial and sacral components. And just to recap some of the things we talked about in the previous tutorials, the preganglionic fibres in the parasympathetic nervous system are longer than the preganglionic fibres of the sympathetic nervous system. And the reason for this is that the ganglia lie near or actually within the target organs. So this means that the postganglionic fibres tend to be shorter and are direct to the target cells. So longer preganglionic, shorter postganglionic in comparison to the sympathetic nervous system. So we'll look at the anatomy of the parasympathetic nervous system by first looking at the cranial outflow and then looking at the sacral outflow. So looking here at the top of this diagram, the cranial outflow of the parasympathetic component is found within nerves 3, 7, 9 and 10. So that's the ocular motor, the facial, the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerve. So the bottom one here represents the vagus nerve and you can see that it has this wide distribution to several thoracic and abdominal viscera. So the vagus nerve makes up the largest component of the parasympathetic division. So in terms of the functions of the cranial component of the parasympathetic nervous system, it acts in the eyes to bring about constriction of the pupil and it also acts on the ciliary muscle to provide accommodation of the lens. It has functions in the glands of the head, so the salivary and lacrimal glands are innervated so there's this secretomotor function to the glands of the head. And then in terms of the thoracic viscera, you've got the heart and the lungs which are innervated by the parasympathetic division. So within the heart, it decreases contractility and the rate of the heart. And in the lungs, it causes bronchoconstriction and also there's secretomotor function to the mucous glands. In the gut, the parasympathetic division has motor function to the gut wall, increasing peristalsis and it relaxes the sphincters and it also has a secretory function, a secretor motor function to the glands of the stomach and the small intestine. So let's take a brief look at these individual cranial components of the parasympathetic nervous system. So the first one is the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3. So this has its origin in the midbrain at the edinger westphal nucleus and the ocular motor nerve extends to this ganglion in the periphery called the ciliary ganglion and then this innervates the ciliary muscle and brings about accommodation of the lens and it's also motor to the pupil so it causes constriction of the pupil. Next we have the salivatory nuclei so we've got the superior and inferior salivatory nuclei. The superior salivatory nucleus gives rise to the facial nerve and with regard to the parasympathetic division, you've got two branches of the facial nerve that you need to know about. You've got the greater petrosal nerve and you've got the corda tympani. So the greater petrosal nerve synapses in the pterygopalatine ganglion. And from here, it has secretomotor function to the lacrimal glands and also to the nasal and palatine glands. The corda tympani branch of the seventh nerve extends to the submandibular ganglion and from this ganglion it then provides secretor motor function to the submandibular and to the sublingual glands. So the superior salivatory nucleus is located in the pons. The inferior salivatory nucleus is located in the upper medulla and this nucleus gives rise to the glossopharyngeal nerve. So the lesser petrosal branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve extends to synapse in the otic ganglion. And the otic ganglion provides postganglionic projections to the parotid gland. So moving on to the final nerve, the vagus nerve. This is different because it doesn't have this peripheral ganglion in the head. So it originates in the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus in the medulla and it's got this wide distribution to the thoracic and abdominal viscera. So the vagus nerve is distributed in various plexuses. So you've got cardiac and pulmonary plexuses, and you've also got the myenteric plexuses found in the gut wall. So the myenteric plexuses include Meissner's plexus and Auerbach's plexus.
So you can see in this diagram, the postganglionic fibers of the vagus nerve are very short. You've got these synapses within or very near to the target organ. So the postganglionic fibers are very short. So as we mentioned, the vagus nerve has various functions to do with the thoracic viscera and the abdominal viscera. So moving on to the sacral component of the parasympathetic nervous system, this outflow arises from spinal segments S2 to S4, and these segments give rise to the pelvic splanchnic nerves. And in this region, the parasympathetic nervous system innervates the muscles of the rectum and inhibits the internal anal sphincter. It also stimulates the bladder wall, the detrusor muscle of the bladder wall, and inhibits the internal urethral sphincter. In terms of the male reproductive system, the parasympathetic nervous system, when activated, causes erection in males, whereas the sympathetic nervous system is responsible for ejaculation. So that's a quick look at the anatomy of the parasympathetic nervous system. If you have found this video helpful, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and make sure you check out some more of our videos. Thank you for watching.